So in order to prepare for this video, I got this app. It is very creatively titled Chess. And I started playing rounds against the computer. And guys, I was really good. I was like winning every game. I thought to myself, am I a chess prodigy? No. Turns out the app was set to beginner. So I set it to intermediate and I immediately got my ass kicked. Anyways, welcome to the video. Hi, my name is Ashley and I review celebrity acting techniques. Last week, I basically inhaled the Queen's Gambit. Holy shit, what a series. I basically knew I wanted to do an episode on it from like the first or second episode. It was just, ugh, fuck. It didn't have the right to be that good. So without further ado, here is Anya Taylor-Joy's acting technique as seen on The Queen's Gambit. Oh, and be sure to stick to the end of this video to see how this technique reads on camera because I think, uh, I think I got a pretty fucking great scene for you guys. That's me trying to wink. Is it working? Sometimes I wink and I just blink both my eyes. I think that's been good. So let's talk about Anya Taylor-Joy's acting technique. And before anyone hates on me in the comments, yes, it's pronounced Anya. In America, people find it very hard to say my name. It's Anya. They like aneurysm. I'm trying to find a nicer aneurysm. word. Aneurysm. So yeah. that it's not Anya. It's, it's not Anya. It's not Anya. Yeah, no. It's Anya. See? Fucking told ya. Anyways, for Queen's Gambit, I'd say that Anya Taylor-Joy has a very outside-in acting technique, where she wants to change how she looks on the outside to feel more like the character on the inside. In acting, there are generally two schools of thought. There's inside out and outside in. Inside out is more about the inner life of the character. You want to change your psychology to fit the character. So you're thinking about the character's backstory, their relationship with their parents. Maybe you're adding some secrets in there, some subtext. Whereas outside in says, you know, all of that is well and good, but if I change my walk to fit my character, if I change my mannerisms, my hair, my makeup, my clothes, all of that is going to change my psychology on the inside. Now, neither technique is correct per se. They're just different ways to approach the same thing. So the reason I'd say she's more outside in for Queen's Gambit is because in one of her first meetings with the director, she said Beth needed red hair, which I love. I mean, not only is she standing out for being the only woman in a male dominated field, but she's standing out because she has the shock of red hair. So that helped her get more into character. She also developed a walk, especially for Beth. Take a look. It was one of the first conversations I had with Scott where I, I thought that as a child she would waddle and what it felt like was very <laughs> awkward and I would just kept going up to Scott and going, am I an idiot? Is this gonna work? Like, does this make sense? Um, the way that she moves and the way that she holds herself is very, um, she takes it from the things around her. So I loved the idea of, okay, this is Beth after she's seen an Anne Margaret movie or an Audrey Hepburn movie. Right, and she's right. decided, oh, like their feet go this way. So this is the way that I walk now. And she's just trying to, to figure it out, which is why I think when you finally get to the, the last episode, she's got this kind of like little butch walk going on, but she means business and she's wearing the power suits. And yeah, that felt good. Another thing that really helps her character is wardrobe and makeup. So Taylor Joy and the director Scott Frank had this amazing idea where Beth doesn't know who she wants to be. So every episode she has a different celebrity icon she's trying to emulate. So throughout the series we have references to Edie Sedgwick, Natalie Wood, Audrey Hepburn. We even have a mannequin that she copies off of. She kept reflecting these people that she saw. She would look even at mannequins, you know, she would see dresses on a mannequin and she would want to be that. She would see other girls and that continues throughout the thing. There's a woman on the staircase who's dressed, you know, rather smartly and she looks at her, you know, she's always kind of reinventing 
If you're curious about the Queen's Gambit's costumes, I really recommend this website, thequeenandthecrown.com. It's like this virtual exhibit. Anyways, my favorite detail I learned from that website is that the final outfit is meant to look like a white queen. And on top of that, it takes upon seven squares to become a white queen. And there are seven episodes in the series. Guys, my mind is blown. Just give this fucking costume or an Emmy already. It's just so fucking good. It's so I can't. Anyways, this is not a costuming channel, so we'll go back to acting. This next tip, I felt so validated when I heard that Anya Taylor-Joy does this because I also do this. She makes playlists for all of her characters. But you say you make a playlist for every character that you play. Mm -hmm. What's on Emma's playlist? The main one is Hall & Oates, Rich Girl. That was kind of the, the song of the theme. Yeah. Oh yeah, da, I like da, it. Da. And then there was a whole bunch of just really romantic music, like I'm Forever Blowing Bubbles, Louis Armstrong, and um, the love theme from the Robin Hood's animated movie mm -hmm. that made Marion sing, so that was in there. Uh, yeah, she dropped specific songs from her Emma playlist. God, yes, I am so pumped for this. As you can see, half my Spotify is character playlist. They're either named like the character I'm working on or the title of the play. And you bet your ass I'm gonna be using some of those Emma songs. God, that's so fucking great. Hi, welcome to the set of The Queen's Gambit. Just kidding, this is my house and we literally bought this chessboard three days ago. I barely know how to play it. Anyways, how this typically works is that we have one take where I am totally neutral. I only had an hour to prepare and then I'll do another take where I incorporate the actor's acting techniques. But before we begin, I just have to acknowledge I know her technique is outside in and I am already wearing clothes that connect me to the chessboard. I know I've got Orange chop, orange chessboard, orange nails, orange chessboard, even got the checked pants. Yes, yes, I know. But if you've seen some of my other videos, I don't change outfits between takes. It's pretty standard that you wouldn't change outfits between auditions anyways. So I'm just gonna, just gonna wear the outfit for the neutral take. I hope that's okay. And then we'll add in the other stuff. Sound good? Fine, I mix up birthdays and I have an alcohol problem just like everyone else in this fucking country. But I am here and I do shit. I pick up Jake from shit. I bring dessert for Easter. I clean the downstairs bathroom. I fire the cleaner. I hoover the car. I hang up all your certificates. I never make you feel guilty for not wanting to have sex with me. I am a great guy just have a bad personality. It's not my fault. Sometimes people are born with fucked up personalities. So I love how this monologue ends hate how it begins, and I think it's super obvious when I'm fishing for lines. This is kind of a hard monologue because it's a very list-heavy piece, and unless you make all of the articles in the list specific, they kind of blend together. Take a listen. Fire the cleaner, I hoover the car, I hang up all your certificates, I never make you feel guilty for not wanting to have sex with me. Make them specific! I also feel like they blended together because I'm very much trying to remember the order of everything in this list. It's kind of wordy. Like I said, my saving grace to this monologue is the ending, especially this moment after. I love the clatter. It really drives it home. Hey, welcome back. Now I'm going to try Anya Taylor-Joy's acting technique and this technique actually involves makeup, which I love because I am a makeup person. Finally, my years of watching makeup YouTube are paying off for my acting career. One of the cool details about the show is that in the last episode, she is wearing the same lipstick that her mom wore earlier in the show. So it's kind of tying those two characters together. So, um, I actually have this lipstick that my mom gave me. It used to be hers. She gave it to me. I did not steal it. Mom, this one time, I did not steal your makeup. The other times I did, but this time you gave it to me, okay? So I'm just gonna put that on and um, I'm really curious to explore what is it like for this character wearing her mom's lipstick and seeing that lipstick on the glass 
as she's like struggling with her addiction and like admitting that she's drinking too much. Like, I, I just feel like it's a really cool juxtaposition. Like your loving mother's lipstick on this really grimy dependence on a substance. So should be fun to play with as an actor. So now we have to develop my character's unique way of moving chess pieces on the board. This was something Anya Taylor-Joy did and I actually have a quote from her, from her Marie Claire article. She says, I wanted her to have a very distinct way of moving the pieces that was still, whilst very quick and ruthless, undeniably feminine. Beth doesn't have to choose. So you can grab either right or left-handed. I am naturally a righty. That's kind of generally how I grab it. I grab it like a pen. I feel like I also have to remember that my character is drunk and probably isn't doing things very well. Maybe since I am right-handed, I'll make my character left-handed so it's harder for me to move since I have been drinking. That's a good idea. Playing with sounds kind of cool, right? You know, this versus I like that. Ooh. So I think I've decided my character is left-handed and they grab the pieces with this little, it's like a llama, but it's sideways. So they grab them and they're pretty aggressive at first. Then this takes this guy, this would go this. They have a moment where they look at the queen. Some of this I had kind of known I wanted to do beforehand, but we're just kind of heightening it, making them left-handed. Then the king gets tipped over one finger. I like that. Welcome to my living room. So we are here because we need to figure out how my character walks. I think I already have an idea on how I want to walk for this character. I, I really want to play with the juxtaposition of being a kid and being a drunk, kind of like the lipstick that we talked about. So when I was a kid, I was actually really pigeon footed. So if you can see my shoes or my feet rather, um, I used to have this as my neutral. And I actually had to have that unlearned because it's not a healthy way to stand, especially when I started doing dance. That was um, not something dancers should do. You're typically like this. But I think maybe my character's neutral is like somewhere, like this is to the extreme. I can't stand like this, but maybe it's something about like here, just, just a little bit pigeon footed. Eight. Ten. One. So I have an idea. I think my character, when they are not drunk, they are pigeon footed. They shuffle, but they still walk pretty normally. Like this would maybe be them in the grocery store. Maybe they're looking for their favorite cereal. But I think if they were to get drunk, the shuffling would get bigger and they get slower. Right? All right, we are ready for the final piece of this acting technique, and that is a playlist for this character. And I made a Spotify playlist for this shoot, and I'm so excited to just, I don't know, get into it. Fine. I mix up birthdays and I have an alcohol problem just like everyone else in this fucking country. But I am here and I do shit. I pick up Jake from shit. I bring dessert for Easter. I hoover the car. I clean the downstairs bathroom. I hang up all your certificates. I never make you feel guilty for not wanting to have sex with me. I am a good guy. I just have a bad personality. It's not my fault. Sometimes people are just born with fucked up personalities.
Wow, huge improvements. I love how quiet and intense this take is. Look at that moment before. That is a great moment before. And then I go into it and I loved how in this take, I, the character, am the White King. Like I literally placed myself as the White King on the chessboard. So it's even more fucking brutal when I get checkmated later in the scene. And here I am going into that list that we talked about, and it's very specific. There's a lot of light behind my eyes. And I think I got that because the song that was playing before this take, it was I'm Forever Blowing Bubbles, and the lyrics are like, my dreams are like bubbles, they burst and they die. It's very dark, and it brought me to a dark place. And now I'm about to realize I'm in checkmate. There I am looking at the board. I'm in checkmate. I have to admit that I'm going down. The White King is going down. It's a great metaphor because while this character really can not admit that they have a drinking problem, they at least have to admit that they're in checkmate. So the White King is in checkmate. He goes down. We've got a moment after where I take a sip from the glass that has my mom's lipstick on it. And what can I say? It's a fucking great take. Anya, bitch, this fucking worked. If I had to give myself a note, I'd say I lost all of the mannerisms I had developed for picking up the chess pieces, but I honestly, I, uh, yeah, I don't care because the acting is too good. You're not looking at hands anyways as an audience. You're looking at the face. And I think part of the reason I lost the mannerisms was because that song just put me in this really intense place. Like I had never heard that song before this shoot. She mentioned it in that interview and I thought, fuck it, let's play it. And it turned out to be a really great song. Like, fuck, that is a great song for actors. Overall, this technique makes me think of cross-department collaboration. I mean, of course, Taylor Joy is working on her own shit. She's making her chess mannerisms. She's making her character walk. But she also had to collaborate with hair and wardrobe and makeup and props and the director in order to bring this character to life. I think that level of collaboration is beautiful and it's very much in the spirit of filmmaking. You know, I'm acting in and producing a film in 2021 and I think I've learned from this shoot I should be open open to collaborating and really tying all those departments together to make a character. But I'm curious to know, which take was your favorite? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to click thumbs up and to click subscribe. It really means a lot, especially for um, smaller channels like me. We're small but mighty, you know. Size isn't everything, I'm told. <laughs> <laughs> also, if you have any ideas on what actor I should try to emulate next, please let me know. I would love to take your suggestions. Overall, thank you so, so much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye!